Where should you store your sample libraries? Now that's a question I'm going to attempt to answer in this video and we're going to break it up into two parts. Firstly, the physical hardware side and secondly, from a software point of view, how we set that up in the computer. So firstly, hardware. Now you could just store your sample libraries on your internal computer, but storage is limited. Sample libraries can be quite big. And when you're composing, they're constantly accessing that cache. And so they can put a lot of pressure on your internal drive. So I always recommend externally storing them. And I'll recommend, I'll get straight to the point, SSDs. I would skip hard drives. I've quite literally got a stack of my old SSDs, hard drives, everything right here to the point where I've got an old 14 terabyte hard drive thing here which I use to just offload and store stuff in all honesty especially from the video production side um, but SSDs highly recommend these firstly because they're fast and secondly they're actually extremely affordable now and quite durable hard drives have a lot of physical elements to them while SSDs don't. Now SSDs I specifically recommend. The one I'm actually holding is this one right here, the SanDisk Extreme Portable SSD. I've got an 8 terabyte one, but you probably don't need that much storage. Although saying that, this only cost me £350. You can get a terabyte for £89.99. And this one goes, as you can see, at 1050 megabytes per second, which is more than enough speed for what you're going to need. Uh, you can get two terabytes. I don't think it's that much extra, actually. 136, that's not bad at all. And two terabytes will store plenty of libraries. Other brands I recommend, Samsung. I've got actually one of my first ever ones, an old T5 here. This is only 500 gigabytes, but again, you can get a terabyte for 6 99 or two terabytes for 121 pounds and 25p. Another system I recommend is an internal Samsung SSD. What's nice about this is you can get an external housing. I've got one right here. It's USB-C. If the autofocus will lock on, it won't. But I can promise you there's a USB-C there. But what's nice, if the port ever goes on this, well, your internal SSD is fine. It's right there. And so all you've got to do is swap out the casing and you're good to go. I've never had any problems with this. And that is one of the only problems with these little SSDs is if that port goes, you're stuffed. And so for the longest time, I was rocking these SSDs, internal ones in housings, and then just swapping out the housings when the port went. But saying that, I'm really liking these SanDisks one because they're tiny, super portable, waterproof, and I've not had a single problem. I've actually got another one which is plugged into my computer. That's another eight terabyte, which I use for other stuff as well. But there's a quick run through from a hardware point of view. To summarize, I advise external storage. I'd say at least by a terabyte, two for longevity. I was rocking a four terabyte for the longest time and I could probably have stuck with it if I went through and deleted some sample libraries that are a bit redundant. But as a reviewer, I've ended up with tons and tons of sample libraries, which is why I've got an eight terabyte one. But SSD to make things faster. HDDs are just not quick enough and SSDs are very affordable and you just don't want to be putting that pressure on your internal computer. Now, from a software point of view, setting things up is actually re relatively simple. We're going to use native access as an example, but I'll show you some other ones afterwards as well. Now, the first thing you want to do is go to your preferences and then go to file management. Now I really like how native access does it. Download location, this is simply where the product will download. That's normally the bit that gets deleted anyway. Application location, so specifically like contact, that's an application, contact player, things like that. The actual application itself, I have that stored on my computer because it's an application. It's relatively small and I want instant access. I want it to instantly load. Now content location, this is where the samples are going to be stored. And as you can see there, I've specifically specified my SSD. And all you gotta do there is click browse. It'll open up a separate window. And oh, as you can see, this is my native instruments uh, folder in my SSD. We'll close that down for now. So it's really as simple as that for setup. But 
what happens if I've moved or changed location? Well, you can repair it. And it's where this is quite smart, actually. And I'll show you an example. If we go to, there was one I actually already said, Emotive Brass. If I want to repair this, you can either reinstall it and it will reinstall it in that location that you've specified. Or if I want to repair it, choose location. Now this is where you'll go specifically, we'll start from afresh, we'll go sample library, I'm going to go to my sample libraries, native instruments, which is right there. And this one's called emotive brass, which is right there. Click open, confirm, and then it will let me know that's now fixed. And if we reload this by clicking that button up there, give it two seconds to actually think. You can see there that's now working perfectly fine. So that's how you repair it if you're shifting stuff around and that's how you set it up in preferences. Another example, if we hide that one and go to Arteria, again, we're going to look for that little support button, which I believe it's up here. Go to preferences folder right there. I've specifically specified a specific folder. Right, now we're going to jump down the rabbit hole a bit and talk about plugins and how your digital audio workspace and your computer kind of talk to each other in terms of plugins. And we're going to use Decent Sampler as an example of this. So first we're actually going to uh, pick the version to download. I've already got my information in, submit and download. Now the beautiful thing about computers is you don't have to worry about this most of the time, but it is good to know. All we got to do is press continue and install, open our digital audio workspace, and it just so magically knows that the Decent Sampler has been installed and that within the plugin section in Logic, it's there. But if you want to know, stick around. So instead of installing, I'm going to go to customize. You'll notice it skipped destination selection. Well, that's because it already knows where the plugin folder is on my computer that is linked to my digital audio workspace. If I go to customize, you'll see AU, this is specifically Mac, VST, VST3, there's a standalone app as well, and AAX. And it knows where that is on my computer so that when I do click install, it will automatically go there. Now, if I go in Finder, so if you're on a Mac, go to Finder, click Go, it'll be at the top bar, Go to Folder, and it'll do this little pop-up. Now this will be the same on your Mac, Library, Audio, Plugins, VST. If I click on that, it opens up this folder. If I click, click Command and hit the top here, we're just gonna back out ever so slightly to Plugins. And you'll see Components, is the AU, and then we've got VST and VST3. So that when I click install here, obviously we don't, we can just go back to standard installation in all honesty, and just click install, bearing, waiting, and then it'll validate, write, and download. And then if I go back to over here, if we go into our components, you'll see in here, if we scroll down enough, we've got the decent sampler. And that's right there. And then when I open up Logic Pro X, it links to this plugins folder and everything talks together. I think it's so cool and so clever, but you don't really have to know this side, but it is good to know because sometimes you'll have to download the component file and the sample library file and have to drop the component file into this folder. And then when you open that up, link it to the samples and tell it where you put the samples. But hopefully, that kind of breaks it down a little bit simply so you understand. But really cool, really clever, and this is really how I recommend you set up your sample libraries on an external SSD, but having the applications on the internal. But let me know if that's been helpful and if you want me to give any more information in another video. But thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.